Welcome to the Atelier tier. We're going to start working on cast drawing. It's going to be the cast that is the eye of David. Uh, hopefully by this point you've checked out the lesson notes, you've got your source image and all of the other kind of diagrammatic slides that I've provided. You've checked them out and you're ready to kind of get focused on the actual process of working. We're going to have a short lecture period, hopefully short, and then we're going to get right into the drawings. One of the first things that I wanted to bring up about this cast that we're going to be working on is how right at at the jump we have a difficulty with one of the main concepts that we use to interpret reality onto a two-dimensional surface uh, and that is namely the envelope shape right so i prepared a slide here that gives us a sense of what the envelope shape would look like around this cast now remember that when we're blocking things in i'm always talking about how we need to satisfy two requirements the first one is to be descriptive of the subject, and the second one is to be as simple as possible. So the subject here takes place completely inside the envelope or the contour, meaning essentially that the contour tells us almost nothing about the actual character of the cast that we're drawing. The next thing that I think is so exciting about cast drawing, this is, this is why we're actually here is we finally get to interpret real, live, actual shadow shapes and light shapes, actual value transitions. Whereas with Barg, we were living very much in this 2D world. No matter how much we tried to focus on the three-dimensional nature of our subject, it was only in our imagination, right? Only in our mind's eye that we could calculate or understand the the, the 3D nature of those, those Barg plates. Here, we have an actual 3D model to look at. Um, and so the kind of character of the shadow shapes is going to become so much more apparent to us. So starting out your drawing naturally, this is the thing that I, I mentioned I was going to be doing. I'm going to take at each level of the cast drawing what information I have and try to use it for the greatest possible effect that I can achieve. Now, this envelope shape, as I mentioned in the lecture, is going to be very, what's the word, limited, maybe is the word that I, that I want to, uh, to use to describe it. Um, all I'm going to be able to do is measure a little bit in between the top and bottom and compare that to the width from left to right. Hopefully, if I, if I do that very well, I'm going to wind up with proportions that are kind of suitable to my subject. Uh, if I don't do that very well, uh, of course, I'm going to pay for that later. And believe it or not, you know, this is probably going to be a, like a hard thing to to stay with, right? Is to make use of these stages. Now, we went through the BARG program together already. And you've seen how in BARG drawings, those initial measurements that you take, that initial construction that you create in your drawing can have an impact to something that you're going to do 30 hours later. Something I want you to notice, right, is if you look along that, uh, that brow ridge, you know, that, that's above the upper eyelid, and even if you look along that kind of area that is uh, actually the sheared off top of the cast, you're going to notice these little faceted kind of lines in between points that I've drawn there. Now, strictly speaking, if you look over at the cast, you're not actually going to find any of that there. There's no, there's no indication that, that, that shows that that's what's happening. In addition, if you look to the lower left-hand side of the eye, you're going to notice these indications or, or notations of, of facets, right? What I'm doing here is trying to create a very basic version of what I would call a, a linear wireframe, which is essentially a way to take a line and communicate three dimensions with it, right? Because we understand naturally that if we just draw a sphere, we just draw a shape around something it remains actually completely flat. However, if we you know, add some, uh, some indications of Apelli's lines or plane shifts inside of something, we can get a greater sense uh, of what the actual form of it is without adding a lot of kind of value-based information. So you can see by now, by the way, the drawing is really coming quite well to life. We can see pretty clearly uh, the subject versus the, um, uh, versus the drawing, uh, the comparison between them I think is very good. In not too long, I'm going to start getting into shadow and light. And you can see, actually, that areas of the light shape, I've started to make these little hatch marks through them, right? Now, what I'm indicating there is actually Apelli's lines. 
So an Apelles line is essentially just where two planes are meeting each other. This, this peak here is an Apelles line, right? Uh, so inside the form, when two planes are meeting, often it's not a peak like this. Oftentimes, it's a very softly turning form like this. So when I'm hatching across an area, really it's a very similar thing to those linear notations I was making, but just kind of spread out a little bit. Now, finally, we have a little bit of value inside the shadows to see. What I'm trying to do here is just to make the slightest difference in between the light shape as we perceive it and the shadow shape as, as we perceive it. So before this, before we added value, what we had is all these indications and notations inside the shadow that looked exactly like the notations and, and organizations that we had or, or shapes that we had outside the shadow. Now the ones inside the shadow are being dampened a little bit, right? Because we're having, instead of the white of the paper there, we're having like a value one next to the value three that is the, the, the kind of linear design inside the shadow. This is gonna hopefully pop out a little bit the light shape. Uh, so a couple of interesting things to kind of point out at this phase of the drawing, right? Notice that this outer edge to the cast is not something that I've neglected, right? This is an edge that frankly, when you squint down, you will see a lot less of. In fact, probably the visual edge is all the way up here at the boundary of the light shape. Whereas this edge back here is something that falls into the category of something we know is there and something we don't necessarily see as being there. But there's like similar things in portraiture where like when you have light coming at a three quarter angle, you have the bottom of the, of the chin actually, and you have the bottom of the shadow edge of the chin. And what I usually find is when students are squinting down and they're learning about shadow as atmosphere and light as form, they tend to go for the shadow edge on the chin rather than the actual ending of the chin. And it makes all the faces seem a little bit shorter. So this is me just acknowledging that the cast does extend a little bit beyond where the prominent visual edge actually ends. So I'm just trying to keep track of the shape and size of this in a way that's a little bit more strict. I want to start talking maybe about some of the things that we're aiming for at this moment, right? This is going to look to you probably like a pretty developed drawing. I want to say also that there's a second stream of almost equal length that's going to come in to actually complete the drawing. What we've done here mostly is to address the issues and the concepts that are relevant to drawing in the darker areas of the subject, right? That's natural because of course, like the beginning stages, we need to build towards a value platform that will allow us to really in earnest kind of model the forms and the lights. So for you, I think the target has to be to get to a place where your foundation is solid. I wouldn't be afraid to spend several hours just trying to get the basic proportions. Remember that each stage of this is only as good as you practically like invest in making that stage good. Coming to the end of this section of the project, where you should be is in a confident place in terms of the expectation of accuracy. Even at this moment, I want you to go through and retest your triangulation. Look where vertical points are aligning on an axis. Look where points are aligning on a horizontal axis. Take comparative measurements, even at this stage, because the reality is this is probably one of the last moments or the, the final moments where you're going to be wanting to make major changes. Everything after this is going to involve very labor intensive manufacturing of even values and smooth gradations. The last thing that wants to happen during that part of the process is moving the edge of the eye up or down, or moving a shadow edge a centimeter to the left or to the right. Those kinds of changes require that you take two steps back or three steps back to take that, that next step forward. And what we want to do is be as efficient as possible to do justice to our enthusiasm. Remember that that is a finite thing and you are, you're eventually going to run out of enthusiasm for a drawing uh, no matter how dedicated you are to the process. So we want to spend it in the most efficient way possible, meaning no steps backward. So this is the last place where we're gonna take those, those tests and, and triangulations and measurements uh, and make sure that, that moving forward, we can focus on refining the drawing. Thank you all so much and uh, I'll see you next time, all right?